Hello, I'm Jane Goodall, and I'm really, truly sorry I can't be with you in Madison in person today to take part in this Conserving the Future conference, because I know how important it's going to be. Let me start by bringing into this gathering a voice from the forest, just to remind us of all those animals we seek to protect, the distant greeting call of the wild chimpanzee. <laughs> Hello. A conference like this, which brings together so many of the leaders and dedicated employees and supporters of the National Wildlife Refuge and Fish and Wildlife Service, is an important and rare opportunity to help shape the future of conservation. It's really hard to believe that it's been 50 years since I began my study of chimpanzee behavior in what's now Gombe National Park in Tanzania. That research continues, but as most of you know, I'm no longer actively involved in field work. Instead, I'm traveling 300 days a year, talking to people, politicians, business leaders, scientists, children, in many countries, persuading them of the importance of caring for all those other than human species and the wilderness areas where they live. Those who seek to conserve the natural world must often make sacrifices, working long hours for seemingly little reward. I truly commend each and every one of you for your dedication, especially as we who care seem to be fighting such an uphill battle against huge forces, global warming, habitat destruction, human population growth, extinction of species. I don't have to tell you about these and all the other horrific threats facing animals and the environment we all share. And it makes it that much worse knowing that we humans have been responsible for most of the problems, the problems that now we must try to solve together. Is there in fact hope for our planet for our children and future generations? This is what I'm asked again and again. Of course, there really is a lot of gloom and doom out there, but there are also many innovative and effective conservation programs, and so many amazingly inspired people who are rescuing animal and plant species from the very brink of extinction, restoring habitats, and even entire ecosystems, people who will never give up. Let me mention one project that I know about, just as an example. In the early 90s, I flew in a small plane over the tiny 30 square mile Gombe National Park and the area all around it. I was horrified to see the almost total destruction of the forests that had once surrounded the park. Gombe was totally surrounded by cultivated fields, over farmed soil, terrible erosion. More people were living there than the land could possibly support. How to try to save the chimps when people were struggling to survive? This led to the Jane Goodall Institute's Take Care program, instigated to improve the lives of the people living around Gombe in a holistic way. We respected their priorities. We started by helping them to grow more food and improve health facilities and their children's education. Then we introduced watershed management, sustainable use of water, and the fuel-efficient stoves. We started microcredit programs, especially for women, scholarships for girls, and provided family planning information. It was difficult at first to gain cooperation from the local people, but today they have hope for the future. They've become effective stewards of the land, and they're helping us to restore not only their own environment, but also the forest habitat of the chimpanzees. In other words, we found that an integrated approach to conservation is what works, and so we're replicating take care methods in other parts of Africa. It would be absolutely useless for any of us to work to conserve animals and wilderness if we weren't educating new generations to be better stewards than we've been. That's why 20 years ago, I started the Roots and Shoots program that encourages young people to learn about environmental and social problems 
and empowers them to take action to solve those problems. The program began in Tanzania with 12 high school students. Today, the program is in 126 countries with some 16,000 active groups and this involves young people from kindergarten all through university and more and more grown-ups are participating as well. Every group works on projects in each of three areas to help people, to help animals and to help the environment. And running throughout is the theme of let's learn to live in peace and harmony not only with each other but also with the natural world. The main message of Roots and Shoots every one of us makes a difference every day. Every one of us has a role to play. We're growing new generations of committed citizens dedicated to creating a better world. Citizens who share similar values, who understand that while we need money to live, we should not live for money. So let's join hands with these enthusiastic and dedicated young people to create a better world for the future generations. Let's join hearts and dare to show that we care for those with whom we share or should share the planet, that animals and wilderness areas are important in their own right. There is hope for the future, but only if all of us from all countries and all walks of life take action and help in whatever way we can before it's too late. Finally, I'm so very appreciative of all that you participants are already doing. I feel hopeful that this conference in Madison will be a true landmark in conservation strategy and that the outcome of your discussions will provide new hope for the future of our beleaguered planet Earth. And thank you for giving me this chance to let you know that truly I am with you in spirit.